China just scored a massive victory at the 2023 BRICS Summit, and Western leaders are quickly realizing the unipolar world led by the United States is long gone, and the future is most definitely a multipolar world where smaller countries around the globe want two things. Number one, their voices to be heard, and number two, to be treated fairly and equally. Two weeks ago, leaders from Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa met for the 15th annual BRICS Summit to discuss plans on how this new political alliance will change the world. You might think that's an exaggeration, but changing the world and breaking free from Western hegemony is the exact mission of the BRICS Alliance. And as you'll see in today's video, they are quickly making this dream a reality. The big news from this summit is BRICS will be expanding in January 2024 and welcoming six new countries, Iran, Saudi Arabia, the UAE, Argentina, Egypt, and Ethiopia. The expanded BRICS network will comprise of 11 countries and have almost half the world's population and produce a third of the world's GDP. The expansion is historic, reflecting the resolution of the BRICS countries to unite and cooperate with other developing countries meeting the expectation of the international community and serves the common interests of emerging markets and developing countries. China is the big winner from this BRICS summit as it has secured massive deals with both Saudi Arabia and Iran. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has officially commissioned a nuclear power plant to be built by the Chinese, and Iran has awarded a $2.7 billion airport expansion project to China. But pay attention as I'm going to reveal the true meaning of BRICS right here. Iran will pay for the entire project in crude oil completely bypassing the use of the United States dollar for this transaction. This is exactly what the BRICS alliance represents. Countries trading and making deals using their local currencies, or in this case, their valuable commodities. This is the simple reason why the ever-expanding BRICS network remains the biggest challenge to the United States-led world order. China's President Xi Jinping even took a direct shot at the US government's global actions. Here is the exact quote from a speech at the BRICS summit. But some country, obsessed with maintaining its hegemony, has gone out of its way to cripple the emerging markets and developing countries. Whoever is developing fast becomes its target of containment. Whoever is catching up becomes its target of obstruction. But this is futile, as I have said more than once. Blowing out others' lamps will not bring light to oneself. It's quite the statement from the Chinese president, who is using an ancient Chinese proverb to help people understand the reality of what is happening around the world. The United States and its Western allies have largely ignored the needs and concerns of smaller developing countries for far too long. It's exactly why in the past decade, over 150 countries around the globe have signed up to participate in China's Belt and Road Initiative. While the the United States government spends its money maintaining over 800 military bases around the world, China has been investing in life-changing infrastructure projects for countries around the globe. It's exactly for this reason why at this year's summit, over 40 countries express interest in joining the BRICS alliance. However, entry in the alliance is limited. Only six new countries were accepted, so let's break down each new member and share what they bring to the table. Number one, Saudi Arabia. Arguably the most important new addition to the alliance is Saudi Arabia, a key trading partner of the United States for over half a century. The Saudis certainly aren't going to stop trading with the Americans anytime soon, but it's becoming increasingly clear they are very interested in building closer relations with China and the BRICS community. Saudi Arabia's Ministry of Education just instructed all public and private secondary schools in the kingdom to implement Mandarin language classes. It seems like the kingdom is getting ready for a lot more business deals with China as they also just announced a $3.6 billion deal to buy 10% of China's Rongsheng petrochemical, which will result in the Saudis supplying the Chinese company an additional 480,000 barrels per day of crude oil. Number two is the United Arab Emirates. Similar to the Saudis, the UAE is also a top oil producer in the region and already has close ties with China. The UAE is a natural fit for the alliance as it manages over $1 trillion in its sovereign wealth fund. The UAE will be pouring new capital into the BRICS-controlled New Development Bank and funding various projects throughout the BRICS alliance. For the UAE, joining BRICS represents diversification as the country already has close ties with Western countries and now can focus on building new relationships in the global South. Number three is Iran. With Saudi Arabia, the UAE, and Iran joining BRICS, the organization now controls 50% of global oil production. And with this amount of control and power, BRICS can now completely bypass the US dollar and trade commodities for infrastructure projects, exactly like Iran and China are doing in their new airport expansion project. Or 
they could use local currencies instead. This is a major benefit for Iran, who is actively sanctioned by the United States and restricted from using the US dollar. BRICS has given Iran a new lifeline and more ways to survive US sanctions. Argentina is number four and joins its neighbor and original BRICS member, Brazil, in the new alliance. Argentina's currency has been in trouble for years, and to reduce the trade risk associated with the dollar, all exports from Brazil will now be conducted with the Chinese yuan, which is once again another massive victory for China. While Argentina doesn't bring the deep financial pockets the UAE does, it contributes in other ways, most importantly, minerals and raw materials that will be valuable to the BRICS group in the future. And finally, Egypt and Ethiopia will follow in the footsteps of South Africa and become the second and third African nations to join the BRICS alliance. 50 of the 54 African countries are already participants in China's BRI, so it makes sense that more African nations will follow and join an alliance with China. China has given smaller African countries a voice and a future in this new multipolar world, through China's Belt and Road investments. Even during the summit, China announced new measures to further help the African continent. China will be allocating more resources for Africa's industrialization and agricultural production, as well as training 20,000 African students in vocational schools. But to be honest, Egypt and Ethiopia are joining the BRICS alliance primarily to break away from the control of Western-dominated financial systems. The strength of the US dollar and high US interest rates have increased the cost of Egypt and Ethiopia's imports, and both countries have already agreed that it will pay for imports from China, India, and Russia in their respective local currencies. The Egyptian president said his country joining BRICS will help raise the voice of the global south, while Egypt's finance minister said he will focus on investment and export opportunities that involve local currencies. One of the continuous themes you've probably noticed with almost every BRICS member is a strong desire to move away from trading exclusively in US dollars. In fact, Brazil's president, Lula da Silva, stated this before the BRICS summit, I dream of having a common currency currency for our countries to use in transactions so that we could be independent from the US dollar. I dream of BRICS having its own currency, like the European Union's euro. Many countries throughout the global south are rooting for a new BRICS currency, potentially even one that is backed by gold, to challenge the role of the US dollar in global trade, or one day even take over the US dollar as the world's foreign currency reserve. I mean, even Saudi Arabia is reducing its US Treasury bond holdings as its holdings fall to the lowest level since December 2016. But to be completely honest, I think we are many years away from this type of breakthrough. While it will certainly remain a strategic long-term goal, the short-term goal will be reducing dependence on the US dollar, reducing the risk of being sanctioned by the US government, and increasing trade in other currencies. But there is another hidden value of the BRICS alliance that is going to make the world a much better place. Although the 11 BRICS countries have different languages, cultures, religions, and values, BRICS members are joining together through a common bond and paving a pathway for better dialogue and peace. Let me give you two examples. Over the past few years, India and China have been engaged in an intense dispute over their respective land borders. But when President Xi and Prime Minister Modi met in South Africa, the two leaders of the world's most populated nations agreed to de-escalate their border tensions. The situation on the India and China border is extremely complex as the two nations share a 3,400 kilometer border. But this is what happens when world leaders meet and dialogue is encouraged. Solutions to complex problems can be found. Another great example is Egypt and Ethiopia, putting their differences aside and solving their own territorial disputes over a dam built on the Blue Nile River. Both nations have been in a stalemate for two years, with both sides refusing to engage in dialogue. But following Egypt and Ethiopia's invitations to BRICS, the countries have now resumed peace talks. As South African President Cyril Ramaphosa said, BRICS has embarked on a new chapter in its effort to build a world that is fair, the world that is just, a world that is also inclusive and prosperous. Everyone, we've learned a lot from the 2023 BRIC Summit, with the most important lesson being the future of our world will be more divided. The six new countries that will join BRICS next January controls the supply chains of some of the world's most valuable resources, like crude oil and raw earth minerals. While Western critics will argue the BRICS members are too diverse and too different to actually work together and get along, we should never forget the will of the entire global South. Countries in South America, Africa, the Middle East, and parts of Southeast Asia for the first time in many, many decades are finally having their voices heard and finally being given equal opportunities to have a chance 
to rise and prosper. This is what the BRICS alliance represents, and it's why I still remain bullish on its long-term possibilities. Everyone, thank you for making it to this point in the video, and now it's time to let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you think BRICS will develop their own currency next? Do you think their new currency has the potential to be backed by gold? BRICS already has surpassed the G7 in terms of GDP growth. What milestone do you think the alliance will accomplish next? As always, thank you all for your amazing support, and I look forward to seeing you all in our next video soon.